Time is slowly healing the raw grief of Cindy Warmbier. This is it, babe. It's a cold day. But the gaping hole left in her family will never be filled. We wrote son, brother and friend, and that was just him. Everyone loved him. Absolutely everybody that met Otto loved him. It's such a big loss. Otto Warmbier was the American student who became a pawn in a game of international brinkmanship. Captured, held and ultimately killed by a regime that his parents, Fred and Cindy, view as pure evil. All I can say is Otto was treated just like they treat the people. He was a bargaining chip. He was put in a brain-dead condition from torture and they did nothing. A year and three months later, they release him, and he, it was horrendous. The North Koreans are horrible people, the regime is. Horrible, disgusting human beings, criminals, thugs. They're, it's a criminal enterprise in a concentration camp. Otto Warmbier grew up in the sleepy suburbs of Cincinnati. So proud. Yeah. Tall and athletic, he excelled at sport and studied business at an elite university. This is our last day together as Wyoming High School's class of 2013. Tomorrow morning, we will all belong to another class, another job, or another city. To his mum and dad, he was the perfect son. How proud were you of Otto? I, I was really proud. You know, it's a firstborn. What can I say? Everyone knows you have a special bond with a firstborn. He was a standout. At the end of 2015, Otto had some spare time before taking up an internship on Wall Street. So at the suggestion of one of his university professors, the 21-year-old booked a five-day trip with a tour group to the world's most secretive state. What do you think the world needs to know about North Korea? <sighs> it's the scariest place in the world. Canadian Sarah McLaughlin is a teacher, but for five days in Pyongyang, she was one of Otto Warmbier's closest travel buddies. She's never revealed the inside story of that trip until now. The details inked in her journal. We left Saturday morning and Otto was held back, still trying to figure out why. <laughs> ready? All right. Ready to throw it at me? Two, one. This is the last footage taken of Otto before he was plunged into a nightmare. Looking back, I, I definitely think that there was a plan and he was a part of it. As the group was boarding its plane home, Otto found himself at the back of the line. Suddenly, he was seized by guards and marched off. We were trying to protest and not get on the plane yet to wait for Otto. And there was about three of us. And uh, the officers with, with machine guns made us get on the plane. I guess if a guy with a gun tells you, you've got to get on the plane, there's no arguing. I've never experienced fear like that before. Everybody on the plane was just completely silent. Nobody wanted to leave and we had no choice. North Korea accused Otto of trying to steal a propaganda poster from a restricted area at his hotel. Charged with subversion, he was hauled before the cameras to make what his parents insist was a staged confession. On the early morning of January 1st, 2016, I committed my crime. In hindsight, it's tragic what my son went through. It's tragic. He was used as a political pawn, a hostage, 
Everybody knows that it's absurd to think anything different. I entirely beg you, people in government of the DPR Korea, for your forgiveness. Please, I have made the worst mistake of my life. The North Korean regime showed no mercy. Two weeks after his confession, Otto Warmbier was sentenced to 15 years of hard labour and vanished into North Korea's notorious prison system. He had been brutalised by them mentally, physically, emotionally and spiritually. And when that guard pushed Otto out of the door, think about when that door shut and he's alone with those bastards. Think about that. That's what I'm haunted by. The only proof the North Koreans had of Otto's crime was this grainy and inconclusive surveillance footage. It's from a security camera at his hotel, and you can see the timestamp clearly, 1.57am on New Year's Day. But according to others on the tour, Otto wasn't even at the hotel at that time, so this shadowy figure simply can't be him. That vision has a timestamp on it. Your group had been out at a New Year's Eve party in the hours before that. Were you even back at the hotel then? No, the time didn't match up at all. I remember getting back to the hotel somewhere around 3 a.m., not at all before 2 a.m. So that's not even close to 2 a.m. You're saying it, it was more than an hour after that video was supposedly shot that you and Otto returned to the hotel? Correct. Everything about the whole story was fabricated, in my opinion. Fred and Cindy Warmbier say their son was simply in the wrong place at the wrong time. They're convinced his arrest was a carefully calibrated act linked directly to North Korea's weapons program. That's when North Korea started firing off missiles, nuclear weapons, and using Otto as kind of like their, I don't know what you would call it, their prize, their American prize to rub it in America's face, what they were doing. Just a few days after Otto was seized, North Korea carried out its first nuclear test in three years, followed by the launch of a long-range missile. Tensions with the rest of the world were suddenly at an all-time high, and Otto became Pyongyang's human shield against any international backlash. North Korea doesn't do anything by mistake. It was their fourth nuclear weapons test, and they had a lot of things they wanted to cover, and they felt like Otto was going to provide them the security they needed to get away with these things. For 15 traumatic months, Otto's parents, Fred and Cindy, were in the dark about the welfare of their son. They were told not to make a noise, not to upset the regime, for fear they could jeopardise Otto's safety. It was really hard going through this with the family, stuffing our feelings and not being able to deal with anything. That whole time we were told he was in perfect health. By the North Koreans, by the CIA, by our State Department, that he's in perfect health, he's working at a camp. All their intelligence tells them that. If he was begging for help, we'll never know. Through those dark days, the Warmbiers never lost hope that their son would make it back to safety. Hang in there, tiger boy. You're coming home. And not to worry about us, but stay strong. Stay strong, and we'll be fine as a family as soon as you get home. But even in their worst nightmares, they could never have imagined the circumstances in which he did. At the president's direction, the Department of State has secured the release of Otto Warmbier from North Korea. Uh, he is on his way en route home to be reuni reunited with his family. 
Fred and Cindy discovered that for 15 of the months their son had spent in captivity, he'd been in a coma with a catastrophic brain injury. He arrived home blind, deaf, jerking violently and howling. We saw evil. In his eyes, he had seen just ter terrible things. And he had been reduced to this animalistic creature that I couldn't hug and I couldn't get a feeling back from. And, and it, it, it's just, it was horrible. But I'll tell you what it does, it's a motivator. Because you go through that and you say, Otto, I'm, I'm here for you. And you made it home and we're gonna do, we're not gonna get, let these people get away with what they did to you, period. But it was horrible, the, it was just horrible. Otto would never be able to tell his side of the story. He died just six days later. Since then, his parents have made it their mission to expose the evil of North Korea to the world. The easy thing would be for me to let North Korea continue terrorizing me by remaining quiet and doing nothing. That would be the easy thing. But I'm determined for his life to have a huge impact on the world. Since the death of their son, Otto, Fred and Cindy Warmbier have been on their own mission to tighten the screws on North Korea and the regime's enablers abroad. Their pressure has led the US to declare North Korea a state sponsor of terror and there have been other successes in shutting down the money trail that props up Kim Jong-un's regime. Thank you for asking us to speak, because it's five years since I saw Otto, since, since, and, and nobody's forgotten him still. And I just want to tell North Korea, as long as I'm alive, no one's going to forget what you did to Otto. I'm not going to let them. I'm not going away. And I'm in it for the long, the long haul. I'm just patiently waiting because the day is gonna come when that regime is over. And I won't be happy then. There's, there's nothing that can make me happy, but I'll be relieved. You're both very proud parents, but I, I must say, I think Otto would be very proud of both of you. No more so than I am of him. They murdered Otto, they murdered him, they murder people every day. And that's why I say, how can I be quiet? You know, Otto would be He'd be like, Mom, I don't want you to do this if it's going to hurt you. And it's not hurting me. It's not hurting me. It's helping me. Hello, I'm Tom Steinford. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au as well as the Nine Now app.